everybody. Welcome back into another episode of the Behind the Mic podcast, where we peel back the curtain into the sports media industry, find out all about those in it, who they are, and what makes them tick. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest, my good friend, Patriots.com's own Evan Lazar. Evan, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. How are we doing today? I'm doing great, Mike. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited for this. This is uh, this is cool. I know. I don't know about the uh, the avid Catch Twenty Two listeners and who who's cross uh, who cross listens to Behind the Mic as well, but got a little sneak peek into some of your story on that on Tuesday. This is going to air Wednesday, uh, so let's get right into it. Um, we'll talk about you and Barth and your your relationship and all that uh, down the stretch of this one. But first, just quickly, I like to start the podcast with a quick segment called Resume Time. Uh, where it's basically the floor is yours uh, to tell us how you got to where you are at Patriots.com and uh, what that journey looked like. Yeah, well, it was it was a long journey, but fun journey. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I I have a little bit of a a different path to all of this. I, I would say not completely off the beaten path, but I went to school for communications and and journalism and uh, television, radio, media, mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, when I was in college and, and we'll get to some of this when we talk about Barth as well, uh, you know, the the student run stuff, although it was great and I, I got plenty of uh, great memories from doing that, it just wasn't really scratching the itch for me in the mm-hmm. NFL world. I, you know, I went to Ithaca College, shout out the Bombers, but proud alum, uh, but it was D3 football. You know, it wasn't exactly... Uh, for for high stakes or anything right. like that. So, um, you know, I, I really knew at that point that I already wanted to go into covering the NFL and, and things like that. So um, that was really my main focus. And I, I went out to Los Angeles uh, for a semester in college and uh, did a whole semester out there. And a lot of my friends was that, came. Now, with, was that through Ithaca that you went out there? Y- yeah, yeah. Okay. So it was a program through Ithaca. They now do them in a couple different locations, uh, Los Angeles, New York, London. Oh, wow. um, but it all depends on what you know field you're interested in going into. So at the time, I was thinking, you know, TV side, something along those lines, production, you know, things like that. So uh, I went to uh, Los Angeles with, with some friends of mine, you know, some roommates and things like that that were also in the field. And uh, I got my first job in the industry interning at NFL Network out in Los Angeles as a uh, as a researcher a a statistical researcher as you could probably imagine uh, right (laughs) right up my alley yeah so I was researching stats for people for the on-air talent um, for the production on the shows you know that sort of stuff and uh, you know like the little graphics on the lower thirds and things like that like we'd throw numbers up there we throw boards you know up on the screen and uh, it was our job to to build those and, and not necessarily the graphic side of it, but the statistical, the okay. numbers and themselves. So that was my first, uh, you know, crack at it as an intern there at NFL network. And then uh, I was there for my second semester, my junior year of college. And after I graduated my senior year from Ithaca, uh, they invited me back as a uh, contract employee for okay. the football season. Um, so I did that for two football seasons and that was fun. Now it's an interesting, uh, sort of thing that they do because it's, it's seven months on and then five months off. So right. you you work for seven months on a contract. They pay you pretty well for those seven months. And then they essentially lay you off for the off season. Gotcha. And then if you do a good job, you're invited back to, to come back. So and now would you, would you work in the five months off or were you, here and there, kind of just like yeah, part-time stuff, I mean, like I, the, it's kind of yeah. a tough, yeah. Yeah, at that point in my life, you know, I was 22, 23, uh, had, didn't even come close to have meeting Jess yet or anything like that. Okay. So uh, I was like, I, I didn't really need a ton of money, you know, That's so I, I was kind of living the dream out there. So I, I did work a little bit on the side just to make sure I didn't go broke. But, uh, you know, you've made good money, you know, hourly wage and tons of overtime, as you can imagine, during football season. So uh, if you had no major expenses as a 22-year-old, it wasn't really uh, that big of a need to to go out and and get another full-time job. So that was another cool perk of it. And um, so I did that two years in a row. And then after the second year, I just decided that it was time to get something a little bit more permanent. And Uh uh, they weren't uh, really offering too much of that at NFL Network. It was obviously very competitive to get the full-time staff position. So at that point, 
I moved back east. I moved to New York City and uh, worked at Sports Illustrated um, okay. with a coworker of mine from NFLN that had beat me there by about a year and a half. There was an opening on his team, so he hired me um, nice. where I was producing – um, you know, video content, same sort of stuff, you know, video content as an associate producer. And my boss uh, and I would run a weekly football show with, uh, you know, Albert Breer, Peter King, Jenny Varentis, you know, the whole team there at MMQB at the time. And uh, I would just basically help my boss put together the show behind the scenes in any way possible that I gotcha. that I could. Um, so those were like my first two jobs in the industry. But I, I really always had a a yearning to cover the Patriots. You know, that mm -hmm. was like my dream. And um, that was you're from really... here, right? Yes. So I grew up in Needham, uh, okay, Massachusetts, yeah. uh, which is about 20 minutes from Gillette Stadium. So I was I was a diehard Patriots fan growing up. And that's what I always wanted to do. I, I always would, you know, look at, you know, the Mike Reese's of the world and things like that. It's like, well, what do they do? Like, how do I how yeah. do I get that job? Right? Right. So um, I guess that's where the unconventional part comes from because I didn't go the high school newspaper route or like, you know, something like that. I, I kind of took the production jobs and then on the side during this entire time, I was blogging and podcasting okay. about the Patriots, you know, for uh, Pat's pulpit and other, other places and things like that, just to kind of dip my toes in those waters. And at one point I was writing a, a weekly column for the Boston Herald. That was like a next, next gen stats, you know, deep dive stats type of column. Um, that sort of thing. When Sean Leahy was the uh, the editor there, the sports editor at the Herald, mm -hmm. and uh, and so that's how I was sort of trying to break into it. So I, I always hear like you know, not to get on a soapbox about it or anything, but I always hear like, oh well, you should go you know pay your dues and cover high school sports right. and like do that grind. And it's like you you could do that. Like I'm not trying to look down on that by any means, but there's also other ways to go about it, especially nowadays with new media. Um, there's you know a million different ways to to make yourself a, a platform and and to still pay the bills and not go crazy you know driving in your car and sleeping in your car driving around to all these different places and stuff right. like that um to work for you know a newspaper or whatever so uh yes there's obviously tons of value i'm sure in doing it that way but there's also uh you know another path and then uh, after sports illustrated i did that for two years and i just decided at that point that the the fire inside me to cover the Patriots was burning so much that I was like, I just, I have to try it. You know, I'm yeah. in my twenties, if I, if I wait any longer, I'm going to have real life responsibilities and I'm not going to be able to take this plunge. So I, I need to, uh, I need to just go after it and mm -hmm. see what happens. And that's when John Zanis and CLNS came along. So uh, that was 2018. Um, I was a young buck still. And uh, <laughs> I moved back from New York city and uh, lived at home for a while with my parents, which I was lucky enough that, that I mm -hmm. had that option and, um, and worked at CLNS uh, for four seasons and just grinded, <laughs> as you yeah. know, uh, and, yep. uh, and just grinded there. And um, then uh, thankfully, uh, see, I told you this was a long pass. So no, it's good. Me. That's the point. That's why yeah. we're here. Yeah. And then thankfully, uh, after four seasons uh, that I can't say enough good things about about John and Nick and, and CLNS, those are they will always be, uh, you know, family to me. Yeah. Um, and they uh, they're fantastic and just such a great opportunity. You know, I look now at, at you know, you and Taylor and, um, you know, Bobby uh, on the Celtics and mm -hmm. like th that's it's such a yes, it's a grind. And uh, yes, it's it's not your your end goal necessarily, but it's such right. a great opportunity to get your foot in the door and just start to do the job um, totally. and, and do it at, for a great platform and, um, and a, at a high level, you know, that's, that place is not doing it uh, in the, at a JV level. Like, you know, that's a varsity right. team that allows young people like me at the time and Taylor now and Bobby and, everybody that works over there to, to do this uh, yep. with the rest of the beat. Like that I think was the most shocking thing to me when I started at CLNS was like, I would just get into the press room and there was Mike Reese, Tom Curran, um, you know, Karen Grigian, you know, like all these mm -hmm. Doug Kide, Mark Daniels, like everybody. And I was like, wait, I'm just, I'm just here. And I'm just, I'm one here of these. too. Like this. Yeah. Is, like, yeah I, right. It was crazy. Like I, I was just like, I'm one of these people 
I thought that there would be like a cast system or something like that, or we'd have like yeah. tiers or yep. whatever. And it, it was nothing like that. They gave me a credential, just like they gave the, everybody else a credential. And, uh, you know, I, I guess I should you know, shout out Stacy and thank him too, because I was uh, the first along with Forrest. We were the first full-time CLNS Patriots people. So mm -hmm. that was, uh, you know, they took a chance on all of us that we weren't going to totally. go in there and make fools out of ourselves. <laughs> right. So we probably did, but we had Trags. <laughs> You know, Trags was our was our godfather. You know, he was he was our mentor. Yep. And he made sure I didn't make a fool of myself too much. Uh, so that was helpful. And uh, and it just was it was great. And then that's where, you know, I really became good friends with Alex and, and all that kind of stuff. So then uh, long answer comes to a conclusion um, when the position opened up at Patriots.com. Eric Scalavino moved on from Patriots.com and it opened a position up uh, on their their staff writer position. And I was just one day, I was just perusing the craft job page for who knows what reason. Yeah. And I stumbled on the, the job posting. And at the time I was already uh, pretty friendly with Deuce um, mm -hmm. from being down there daily with him and seeing him all the time at practice and, and whatever. So I, I texted him and I was like, are you guys hiring like a, a writer? for the website and he was he texted me back and he's like yeah you know i just didn't really know if you would be interested in coming to work for the team so i wasn't sure um right. but he was like if you apply like you're my guy like you know this is this is a an easy slam dunk for me so i applied yeah. and the and the rest is history that's awesome and so i want to I want to get into a lot of that. I want to get yeah. into like i mentioned you and barth um and some of that stuff but since you mentioned it at the end working for the team, right? Patriots.com. So yeah, it, 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 as most people know, it's, it's owned by the Patriots. It's crafts, you know, craft sports group, craft sports and entertainment. Like you are, your checks are signed by the team. You're Robert, yeah. Kraft. like you're, you know, you're paid by Robert Kraft. So what has that been like? And how has that sort of like, you, you are a reporter with CLNS and frankly, you could kind of say what you want. And does that change when you work for the team? You know, everyone makes the sunshine.com joke. Like, yeah. What challenges has that brought? Um, how have you had to kind of shift your coverage? And uh, I get, yeah, what's it like, again, working for a small company like CLNS that you talked about to all of a sudden working inside the walls of Gillette Stadium every single day? What has that been like? An absolute culture shock. <laughs> I'm yeah. not going to lie to you. <laughs> uh, you know, I got there and I was talking to, to Deuce about the position. Um, once he offered it to me, he's like pitching me on it. I'm like, Mike, this is, it's the Patriots. Like you right. don't need to pitch me on this, but he's pitching me on the position. And one of the first things he tells me, you know, we talked about was me going on the road and, and traveling with the team. Mm -hmm. And I'm not thinking about it. I'm just like, all right, yeah, sure. It's like, sounds uh, great to me or whatever. And he goes, no, like you're on the team plane. And I was just like, whoa, wait, what? Yeah. Like, he was like, no, you're going to be on the team playing, like, with the coaching staff and the players, and, and uh, you travel as the team goes, you go. And I was just like, that is, that is crazy. Right. Yeah. So, I, you know, that was the first thing. And, and I, I honestly, telling my parents was probably the best part, you know, yeah. like, and obviously oh, yeah. just too, but my parents were, were just, over the moon excited to just tell everybody under the sun that this was oh, yeah. happening so uh it was that was a really cool moment too and you know it, it was awesome but in terms of like the coverage of the team and i'm not just saying this because like you said because he signs my checks or or to sound uh any sort of um you know biased about it but right i, I swear to you that i have never been told editorially Mm -hmm. to write something or not write something based off of the fact that I work for the team. Like they right. have never come to me and said, this is too critical. Don't say this. Don't say that. Mm -hmm. Now at the same time, you're not naive. You know who signs your checks and you know that, you know, who's looking at your work. So right. you're not going to come out there and say things that are outlandish. But when I got hired, I, I said to, to Mike and I said to Fred Kirsch, uh, who's my boss now too, uh, you know, I said to both of them that I only know how to do this one way. So mm -hmm. I, I have an opinion. I'm an opinionated guy, as people know that listen to the shows and things like that. And yep. they told me that as long as it's between the lines, you know, no, no low blows, no personal shots, nothing like that. But if it's football, uh, critical as anybody and uh, 
lo and behold, I got onto the shows for the first time and I was, you know, walking on eggshells a little bit there for the of first course. couple of, of shows. But Perillo, Fred, Mike, they just would come after the, the Patriots at, at yeah. times, you know, and yeah. just roast them. And I was like, well, if they're doing it, then I, I guess that pretty much anything is fair game. So in the back of your head, you're always cognizant of the fact that you are a team employee and you do represent the Patriots brand and you don't want to misrepresent the brand. Um, but at the same time, we're allowed to say or do whatever we want in terms of writing and content. I'd say the only thing, you know, for people that are listening to this that might be interested in, in getting into the industry, we don't break news. So right. I'm not going to tweet out per sources, you know, the Patriots extended Jelani to buy, right? Like that's not going to come from me. It's right. not going to come from me. There's no rumors that are going to come from me. Uh, there's no uh, contracts, reports, things like that, that are going to come from us. So uh, that part of it wasn't hard for me because that wasn't really my niche. But if you're somebody that is trying to be the next Adam Schefter, uh, then you're not going to do that. With the right. Team. Um, two, two things on that. Do you, I know you said it's not really your niche, but you also kind of had done it a little bit in the past uh, with CLNS as far as breaking news. Do you miss being able to do that? Um, and then I know you mentioned be, you know, being critical and that you're allowed to do it. Do you find it hard to do that? And do you kind of, like you said, walk on eggshells because you are also on the team plane. And so you can walk by those guys, you know, every day in the building. And so I think, and I, I want to get your answer, but it's also, you mentioned, you know, low blows, like, as I I think in this in this industry anywhere you shouldn't just be giving low blows. If you're going to criticize someone, it should be for a reason. And so right. as long as you can back it up, it's like, well, if somebody says, "Hey, what was this for?" It's like, well, here's X, Y, and Z, and here's why I said this. Yeah, that that's exactly how I view it. If it comes out of my mouth, I I hope that I have some sort of reason right. for it too, and some sort of um, thing to back it up. If I don't, then you know you wear that and you take that responsibility. But uh, you'd be surprised, you know, I, I really haven't had a ton of coaches or players come up to me and be overly in my face about something right. that I said or anything like that. Uh, you know, most of the guys are, are great and, and a lot of them just don't really listen to it or don't really uh, pay attention True. to it as much as they can. So there, there's not a ton of that that really goes on in terms of, you know, you said this and we don't really want you to say that sort of thing or, um, you know, coming at me about a, a take I had or, or whatever. And, and frankly, like they easily could, you know, I've been pretty critical, especially the last couple of years that we think we all have uh, given right. the product on the field. And uh, there's probably times where I take it a little bit too far just for the performative side, side of things. But of uh, uh, thankfully they, they've never uh, said anything to me that, or, you know, been abrasive or anything even closer resembling yeah. that. So uh, it's a, uh, it's great. It's a, it's a really good place to be because they, they really do encourage, you know, when I got hired or actually it might've been in my, my in-person interview, um, Fred said to me that the crafts told him when they started this whole thing, that if we're going to have a team website and we're going to have writers and we're going to have a show, there's no point in doing that unless we're going to be honest and objective about what's going on with the team. Yeah. Otherwise, we are just sunshine.com and PR. Right. And, and uh, you know, what's the point of, of putting all this money into content if that's how we're going to operate? Totally. Um, all right. I want to get into what your niche is then. And that's, you know, uh, among many things, film study. And in between the lines like, lines, like you mentioned, Fred talked about, the X's and O's, breaking things down, all 22, analytics, statistics, like it the the nerd hat i guess and the yeah. sort of the film junkie right and it, you said it earlier so i felt like i could also call you a nerd back but absolutely can yeah what uh if you could just dive into that a little bit how it started did you play football in the past how do you understand the game so well um when you dove into it did it kind of feel like something brand new just how that sort of how that angle of watching the game and breaking it down for fans and people involved uh how that started and you know where I guess you see it growing and, you know, where you can take it from here. Yeah, honestly, it's a, it's a good question because I, I'm pretty much self-taught when it comes to the X's and O's of the game. Um, and I, I really, yeah. And I, I really, how it started was in college, I had a game pass account mm -hmm. and I had a lot of free time as sometimes you do in college. Right. And I took that free time and I just watched every single game, every single Monday or Tuesday of the week before. I just 
I watched every single game, just all 14 and of all, them. All, holy shit. That's yeah, insane. all 13 of them, whatever. Yeah. And the goal that I had to do it was to try to get in my brain to try to get the game to slow down, right? Mm. And like to try to understand the structures and the different things that teams are trying to do. And, you know, this team does it this way, that team does it that, another way. And I also, I, and I think this is such a great advantage that um, people have nowadays that maybe didn't exist you know, 30 years ago or whatever, is that with the internet, you can just Google things, right? Like, and you yeah. can just go crazy with like, the different you know articles that are out there um you know even on, on a beginner intro level like matt bowen has a series of what's cover one what's cover two what's cover yeah. three and you just go on down the line and after a while it all just it's not rocket science you know as some coaches like to say so after a while it all just kind of clicks and, and fits together uh, of what exactly um it is that that's going on on the field um, and then I would say that once I got to NFL Network, I was around a ton of former players and coaches, and True. I would just listen to what they were saying and ask questions when I could, or or they were open for it, and uh, and just pick their brains about what was going on on the field and what they saw and how they watched film and uh, things like that. So uh, th those were great resources for me as well. But when I got into it that I started doing uh, Twitter threads, you know, back in the day mm -hmm. before they started cracking down on those things. And I would just post these long threads of me just recording my computer screen of like an all 22 oh, wow. play and breaking it down and things. And I was terrible. You know, I thought I was good <laughs> at it, and I, but I was horrible looking back on it now, but I just did that, you know, all the time, especially for the Patriots, obviously in their games. And uh, I just spent hours and hours, uh, doing that. And then eventually I realized, okay, you know, I didn't play football at a high level. I wasn't a D1 athlete. I, I didn't go to Alabama. I didn't go to the NFL, didn't coach. Right. So right. if I'm going to make this my, my niche, uh, you know, the analytics and the, and the nerd stuff, you know, the stats and that sort of thing. And I had the background from NFL network doing that anyways. Right. And so that, that I realized was a nice way to, to supplement the the all 22 stuff like yes you know i'm seeing this this and this on the film but also you know it's backed up by these numbers as well right, right. and that way there there was a little bit more i guess uh credibility to what i was saying because you're probably looking at me being like well you clearly didn't play football and then you know i didn't i'm not bill belichick's so i didn't coach either right so it's right. like why would i trust this kid uh in his football takes but uh, that's how I was able to to give it a little bit more punch was this is what I'm seeing. This guy's having a great year. Here are 10 stats that also back that up along with the clips and things like yeah. that. It's, it's fascinating. And it's like, it's a, you know, everyone tries to find like what they're going to do in the field. Right. And I think I still try and do that with myself. And like, you know, I try and watch film and, and grant that I, not that I played the game at a high level, but I, I, I understand the game. I played it, but I don't, you know, I never did the hours and hours of film study like you've done or like Taylor has done. And so I feel, really feel like you two, at least on the Patriots beat, have like, you know, found this this one thing that everybody kind of goes to you two for that. And it's it's invaluable because not everybody can do it. Not everybody has the time. Not everybody learned it at that point. So even, you know, somebody like myself or somebody like somebody else, all of a sudden to just dive into it, it may not be as credible. It may not make as much sense. So um, I, I just think it's, it's super cool that you guys, and you know, you have dove into that. Um, I guess now we do have to talk about our friend, Alex Barth and the catch 22 podcast, uh, yes. and what you guys sort of built over there, what you built at CLNS. Um, you guys were talking about it on catch 22 today on Tuesday, this is airing Wednesday, but, um, you guys went to college together at Ithaca. You yes. sort of crossed paths there, worked together, Patriots beat, obviously. Um, and the one thing when I talked to Alex on this episode, um, about was the draft coverage you guys did with Patriots beat and how that, you know, helped your brand. Um, and he mentioned that that wasn't really your thing and he sort of got you into it. And then it's uh, sort of evolved from there. I think Barth was trying to take some credit for the draft stuff there, but, uh, we'll leave that out. So uh, can you just kind of dive into, um, you know, what you guys have been? Cause it's, it's really, it's cool to, I mean, I was an intern with CLNS and I was doing stuff with you guys three, four or five years ago, whenever it was. And to right. kind of see that grow has been awesome. So um, at, at the floor is yours to either shit on Barth, compliment Barth, whatever you want for, uh, for the two of you guys. 
Well, I, I feel like I shit on him enough, so maybe I'll be a little bit sentimental <laughs> in this. And just to, you know, full disclosure, the intern Mike nickname is not a shot at you. It's because <laughs> yeah. you were literally an intern when I first met you. Uh, with, of course. With TLS, so I, I'm glad that's out there as well. But Cut, yeah, cutting I, up, I, uh, I was cutting up Patriots beat promos in my bedroom during the pandemic for like hours on end, just trying to get it. my foot in the door. So yeah, that's what, yeah I, like you said, that's where intern Mike comes from. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, I was out there, and uh, you know that was that was probably that season. Not to go on a on a different tangent, but uh, that season I got access to everything that that like some of the top media in Boston were getting access to. Like I was at training camp during COVID, which only right. I think fifteen of us were invited. Uh, you know, I was like a I had to wait until Stacy would email me the, the the night before or the first thing in the morning, like you can come today. And mm-hmm. I, I thanked it, you know, to him, obviously. Uh, but I think I missed one practice and I was had access to the rest of them. And, yeah. you know, there were other people that, that were turned away, you know, so that right. just spoke to what Alex and I had built at that point at CLNS and, and how many, um, you know, they were, the Patriots recognized that we, we were there for everything as well. And, you know, like you mentioned, Alex and I went to college together at Ithaca, uh, but he he took the more traditional path, and I I kind of you know took the partying path. So it was a little <laughs> it was a little bit different uh, back then. And uh, you know he went and did you know uh, student run radio, TV, like the whole gamut of you know I'm gonna go through the paces like this is ESPN, and uh, and he did a great job with it. Uh, but we, because of that, we, we ran in different circles. We had different mm-hmm. friends, you know, we didn't necessarily know each other uh, that well, which I think surprises people because we're su- such good friends now uh, right. that we weren't necessarily good friends, even though we went to college together. So uh, in 2018, when he tells the story and, and, and is definitely a little bit more salty about it than I am, but in 2018, uh, he was supposed to basically do the job I did for CLNS and become their full-time Patriots reporter. Yep. And right around August, I signed on to, to work with CLNS uh, for the season and move back and, and go into it full time. And I showed up one day and it kind of just got sprung on Alex a little bit that I was coming aboard and I, he wanted to hate my guts. You know, he wanted to absolutely hate me. And I totally understood why. And then as we got into it with each other, we quickly, first of all, we obviously bonded on a, on a friendship level. So that, right. that, you know, was easy. And then second of all, it, it we just quickly realized that we, we were better together, you know, like strength and numbers that we could mm-hmm. like help each other get to the, the place that we wanted to be. And so instead of working against each other, we just started to work with each other and uh, and just became a team. And at that point, you know, it was just good beneficial for both of us career wise. But we also became really good friends. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, that was that was the start was 18, the 2018 season. You know, we went all the way uh, to the Super Bowl together with the Patriots and covered Super Bowl 53. And Was your um, first season on the beat the Super Bowl win? It was, That's and <laughs> I, him and I were standing on the field in Atlanta, and we both looked at each other and we're like, "This might, this might be the peak." Uh, yeah. I remember <laughs> talking to him about it. I, you know, this might be the absolute our peak of our career in terms of the team's success. And we just stood there and like for like 15 minutes and just tried to soak it all in because we knew awesome. there was a chance that we might not be back at the Super Bowl covering the Patriots for a while. So uh, it was awesome. And, uh, you know, we, we, we put ourselves through a lot, um, you know, for a couple of seasons there, I think it was 18, 19. And then he, I think he got to the sports hub in 2020 and, uh, you know, couldn't be happier for him, uh, when he got the sports hub job and, uh, left me by myself, which kind of stunk, but, uh, you know, I couldn't have been happier for him. And, he, and it was obviously well-deserved and, um, you know, we've remained good friends and worked together and, uh, you know, it just, we have this, we both just love sports not not even just football like all sports and so our our friendship and our conversations in person or over text message is just an ongoing like sports radio show you know Mm -hmm. it's just all day long of you know texts back and forth and and stuff like that tweets you know these things funny things or serious and it's just like a a show you know four hour sports radio show but just all the time so it's uh that's that's how easy it was for for us to kind of get along and, and start um, you know, working together. So, 
Um, uh, thankfully, the Patriots recognized that we we had the podcast and uh, it was already successful. Uh, yeah. So they, they kind of put us together on Patriots.com and it's been great. Yeah, was that a uh, was that a negotiated tactic for you? I'll bring Barth with me for Catch Twenty Two, or was that after you got hired that that came about? Uh, no, it, it was actually it was mostly Deuce's idea, oh, and cool. and when we first started, when I first started, um, you know, I, I it was funny because he, and he you know Mike was totally upfront about it, but I wasn't doing a ton in the beginning with the Patriots, and he was like, I know that this is going to feel so weird to you because you were the one man like show at, at CLNS. And then you Mm -hmm. go from that to now you're on a team of people and you know, there's all sorts of things going on. And, uh, and so I, at first I was like, Oh man, like I, I feel like I could be doing and contributing so much more. And then uh, he came to me and he was like, well, we want to give you uh, your own podcast. And I was like, Oh, okay. Well, that sounds great. (laughs) That's something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he was, I was like, yeah, that would be fantastic. He was like, yeah, you know, unfiltered is kind of we banter and we have fun and it's still football but it's a little bit looser and things like that so we was you know we figure why don't we give you like an x's and o's podcast where you really get into the nitty-gritty detail of things and uh he said you know what do you think about just having barth be your co-host and i was like well that's a no-brainer so yeah, you know right. like that that was how that came together was I'm um, really, uh, you know, Mike and then obviously Fred as well. And, and we just brought in Alex because it was it was a already made podcast. Like we were just kind of coming along for the ride. Right. So it was so easy for everybody involved. That's awesome. Uh, it's it's a it's a great show. And I think you you, you mentioned how it sort of just kind of it went from Patriots be kind of that. And not that it's the same show, but it's, I mean, today I was listening to you guys and it was a live Q and a, and I was like, you guys just did that all the time on Patriots. Beat. It's like, you know, it's yeah. like you didn't miss a beat. So, um, yeah. all right. So you've podcasted, you've written, you've written columns, you've reported on news, you've done all that stuff. Um, but that, but then also kind of in general, like what is your, just what's your favorite part of the job? First of all. And then secondly, What's your least favorite part? And I always preface that question with, look, we we talk about the Patriots all day. It's working in sports. It's not like we're digging ditches. But what is something yeah. that, again, the favorite thing and then something that kind of sucks that, you know, is kind of a pain in the ass that people don't fully understand? Yeah. So I would say my favorite thing is that what you just said, it's not a job. Like I never feel right. like I get out of bed and I'm like, oh, I got to I got to go to work today. Like even in the off season on a day like today when we have the shows in studio and stuff like that, like I I'm like out of bed and like ready to go. Like I never mm-hmm. feel like I worked a day in my life, like doing this job. And it's, it beats any type of nine to five that you would ever work. And just oh, in yeah. terms of excitement and how fun it is and just, it's a dream. Like you just get to do this and, and you get to cover the new England Patriots and be in the same locker room and walk around, around these guys and talk to these guys. And, you know, it, obviously now it's, it's, a little different but uh, right. when i first started you know you tom brady's there rob gronkowski's there julian edelman's there stefan gilmore's there you know it's just like stars and, and things like that i mean that's that's it's so cool i never yeah. take it for granted and uh it's just awesome it's it's totally not work like it's ridiculous that they pay right, us it's to not do this. it's <laughs> yeah. it's it's crazy um i would say the one the one downside is that now that i'm getting older and mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I'm engaged and, and stuff like that. You do realize how much of an impact this has on your your life at home and your family life, you know, in terms totally. of, um, you know, whether it's it's holidays, whether it's weekends, whether it's road trips, you know, all that kind of stuff. Our our life and uh, Jess is obviously a great sport about it, but our, our life re- revolves around the football schedule it right. both during the season and in the off season. So not only do you need to be able to sign that up for that yourself, but your spouse also needs to be willing to sign up for that. Your fa- your family, your parents, totally. you know, whatever. And uh, it's hard on them. And I think that's the hardest part for me is like how hard it is on everybody else that, you know, two years ago we were in Minnesota for Thanksgiving. Last year we were in Denver for Christmas Eve, you know, right. like, and it's not me. Like I love what I do. So it's not necessarily me, but it's, it's everybody around you. Uh, that gets impacted that you're not around for those types of things. Uh, no, so that, that part totally. of it is difficult. Yeah. Um, did they give you uh, did they give you Turkey in Minnesota a couple years ago? Did you have a Thanksgiving dinner or no? They did. They did. And oh, uh, there you go. 
and, and you know the the Patriots are so, are super nice about it. Like they know that they're taking away, us away from our families on the holidays, so they always throw in maybe a dinner or something like that as a thank there you, you and, and things like that. So that's all all great. But it, like I said, it, it's you know you don't necessarily feel it because you're in the grind and you're in the trenches of football season. But it's it's your family and the the people around you that are like, oh, you know, we have a Christmas Eve party on Justice Side every year, and they're like. Evan's not coming and they're like, Evan's not here. Like, you know, like yeah, it's not right. like it's not even like he can't come. He's like on the other side of the country, right? right. So it's three um, hours ahead for him. Yeah. 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 So there's like things like that. And I'm like you said, I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad for me. I, I think it's more just that, you know, to tell people that might want to go into this line of work, like you have to think about those things. That like totally. you have I always tell people, um, you have to really, really love it because it does have such a huge impact on your day-to-day life and your just your whole life big picture wise um that if you don't absolutely love this and lo- love football and love what you do then it's it's not going to be for you for sure uh so what's next then for evan lazar and if if mike do so or anybody at patriots.com is listening to this not to say that anybody's going to try and pry evan away and that he's looking for work or anything like that but you know you you worked in production. You worked at a small media company. Now you work for the team that you cover. Um, do you have any loftier goals as far as you know going national? What's your expectation for the rest of your career? Are you content? Like, where do you? I guess you know it sounds kind of like an interview question, but where do you see yourself going, growing in the next five, 10, 20 years? Yeah, this is a dicey one, Mike. I got to be yeah. careful. <laughs> He's listening to this. No, I, I think the biggest thing to me is that I I'm a Boston kid. You know, like I mentioned, I, I grew up in Needham. Uh, I am a diehard fan of all the Boston sports teams. Like this is home for me. My family's right. here um, just from Connecticut, but you know, nearby and, and same roots, similar roots. So I don't plan on, on necessarily going anywhere. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, if there's a Godfather offer out there down the road for me from a national brand, you, you right. have to consider the financial aspects of that. But just in general, it, it, it doesn't, uh, you know, I would love to just kind of grow in the local market. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm not going to lie to you, my my vision or like where I could see myself. And, um, you know, this is bringing Barth along with me too. like, you know, two to six, you know, Alex and Evan, you know, on 98. Barth and Lazar, percent, yeah. Right. You know, like something like that, I feel like is is where I would love to be just because it, it keeps me here. Um, but mm-hmm. it allows me to obviously further my career. So as much as people complain about how negative they are and, and how annoying uh, their takes can be, I know uh, Felger and Maz have it made. You know, like those right. guys ha- have the best jobs in the city, and uh, th- rightfully so. Like they've earned it. But uh, you know that that's that's the dream right there. Love it. Well, if you need a headlines guy, you know who to call. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. Before I let you go, Evan, uh, fast five to finish. Fast five rapid fire questions. Uh, again, before we get you out of here, uh, number one, we talked a lot about sports today. Uh, you love sports, your favorite thing, but what's your favorite thing to do outside of sports? <laughs> I don't have a lot of interest outside of sports. I'm not, okay. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, <laughs> that's a good question though. You know, <laughs> obviously you know, we have a dog and, and, um, you know, anything to do with the dog, you know, just going out on, on walks, hikes, mm-hmm. play with them in the fields. You know, he likes to run and play fetch and things like that. So, uh, that's if I have to like completely go off the grid just to keep my sanity, uh, that that's probably where I am. There you go. All right. Uh, number two, what's the most memorable moment you've had working in this industry? Oh, uh, definitely the Super Bowl in 2019. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's an easy one. Uh, covering the Super Bowl in person, watching Tom Brady win his six with the Patriots side, uh, that will be a memory forever. Yeah. That's, uh, that's insane. I, I missed yeah. it by a couple of years, but yeah, you're very lucky. Hold that one close to heart because I don't know where this team's going at this point. I, I know, uh, right? All right, number three. Uh, best advice you've received uh, working in the sports media industry? Fake it till you make it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I got advice when I was in high school. And uh, after he told me to, I don't name names because I don't want to throw them under the bus. After yeah. he told me that I was going to be poor and you don't want to do this. I uh, know he, he told me that, uh, you know, he asked me who, who's, some of the Patriots reporters that, that you really like and you, you look up to, uh, you know, Greg, Mike Reese, you know, those types of people. And I, I he said, just, just do it. Like, just mm-hmm. do what they do, you know, fake it till you make it. Uh, no one knows what they're doing. Like it's not, there's no right. rule book or like any like set of, of uh, guidelines on how to do this job. Uh, so just uh, try to emulate the people that you respect in the industry. 
Uh, number four, what would you be doing if you weren't working in sports? Oh man, that's another good question. <laughs> because honestly, uh, I, when I turned 12, 13 years old, I knew I wanted to work in sports. Yeah. So I, I would go home and I would watch, you know, around the horn PTI or listen to you know, Glenn Ordway on EEI or whatever. And I, that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted yeah. to talk, talk about sports. So I, I, I almost, I say all the time, um, you know, to my family and stuff that I don't know what else I would do with my life other than this. So like, you know, I really don't have an answer to that. So you're copping out. Come on, give us something. School teacher, anything, nothing. Well, my mom's side of the dog family, walker. <laughs> my mom, my mom's side of the family is all in accounting. And, okay. uh, and, um, so I, I guess I would probably be doing some sort of accounting mortgages, something like that with one of there my, my family members. Yeah. That'd all be right. much more boring. Yeah. So I'm glad I'm not. Yeah. Definitely. Um, all right. Number five, this one's going to, uh, this one might get you going, but Evan, what is your favorite pizza topping? <laughs> uh, my favorite pizza topping. Uh, I would, I'm a barbecue chicken pizza guy. Okay. So uh, I, I, I guess that's a bunch of different toppings, but you know, I love a good barbecue chicken pizza. Um, you know, you got, uh, I, I'm chicken, obviously barbecue sauce, but like a little onion in there too, you know, caramelized okay. onion, something like that. So uh, I'm not a, a huge red sauce guy. I know that's okay. kind of controversial. Uh, so I, I like the barbecue sauce. Love it. All right. You wouldn't try a pickle pizza though. That's, that's correct. No. You always or Caesar or Caesar salad on a pizza. That that's wild. I mean like hot lettuce, like you do you eat warm lettuce. No, on no it's no, you put the cold lettuce on top. It's great. It all works out. It's good stuff. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, that's a, that's a back and forth that we've gotten into plenty of times on the old, the old Twitter machine. So, uh, Thank you, Evan. I appreciate you joining me today. Uh, this was fun. Uh, anything uh, anything coming down the pipe that you want to promo coming up on Patriots.com as we head into training camp? Yeah, sure. So uh, really quickly, by the way, uh, all, all the haters say that I have a huge ego. So nothing like doing a podcast for 42 minutes all about myself, right? <laughs> there you like go. That's, yeah. that's really going to feed right into all of this. So when <laughs> people tell me how condescending I came off on this show, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, the... Uh, Patriots.com, as always, we have our shows. We're going to take a little bit of a hiatus uh, for July 4th and things like that. But uh, Patriots Unfiltered, Patriots Catch-22, um, we have our preview content for training camp coming out over the next couple of weeks on Patriots.com. And then, as uh, as you know, and as uh, I'm sure I'll see you there as well, we'll be there every single day for camp. So it should Love be it. fun. Can't wait. Well, Evan, thank you so much for joining me today. Appreciate the time. Anytime. All right. Well, you can check out the Behind the Mic podcast on Twitter at Behind Mike Pod, on Instagram at Behind Mike Pod, and you can subscribe and follow it uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.